We had our say yesterday, David, on uh, the Arsenal-Chelsea game and, and what it means in our opinions. You give us some... Fill in the details, mate. What are they saying over there? Yeah, it's been a pretty brutal fallout. Good evening, guys, or good day to you where you are in the States and to all of our audiences. The Arsenal reaction has not been pretty at all. Immediately, pressure is now building on Mikel Arteta, which many people forecasted coming into this season because they knew what a difficult start it was for Arsenal on paper with Brentford in their opening match, then Chelsea, Manchester City to come at the weekend. Uh, they then play a couple of games before facing Tottenham in the North London derby, so it could get worse before it gets better. Now, there are some reports here today in the Daily Telegraph saying that Mikel Arteta has five games until after the second international break in October uh, to turn this around. And if he doesn't, he's going to be under severe scrutiny. Now, the Cronkies, Josh Kroenke, son of Arsenal's owner, Stan, was present at the Emirates Stadium yesterday. There are some suggestions that they've met today. I'm sure whether it was today or yesterday, he and Arteta would have spent time together. And Edu as well, the technical director, who too was in the director's box. Uh, we talked on NBC before that match about this clash of styles that Arsenal brought to the table against Chelsea. Arsenal trying to rebuild, embark upon a new project with young players, trying to find their way under Mikel Arteta. They know it's going to take time, but they believe in him. Whereas Chelsea are a win-now team. They just Their only currency is trophies, and that's all they care about. Well, we saw which one went, won out yesterday. It was Chelsea. It was Romelu Lukaku. They showed their class. And, you know, the feeling here contrasts sharply to, to the reaction at Arsenal is that Chelsea are on now this season. They could do whatever they want. You know, they could really push again to retain their Champions League title, to claim the Premier League title, to push on in domestic competitions and oh, how Arsenal would love to be in that position. So, yeah, the feeling here, Robbie, Tim and Danny, is that Mikel Arteta is already under pressure. He's going to have to do a lot to turn it around. David, Tim Howard here. Let's focus on today's game and, and West Ham to look into bolster their defence. David Moyes has his eye on a certain Chelsea player. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's right, Tim. I revealed in my Monday column this morning that people can go and check out and find the full details that Kurt Zuma, who is a well-documented target for West Ham, is the subject of a verbal agreement between West Ham and Chelsea uh, for a €30 million Euros fee to move from Stamford Bridge to the London Stadium. However, I'm afraid West Ham fans, and maybe Chelsea fans if you want him to move on as well, that it's not a done deal because there is no agreement yet over personal terms. Zuma wants a significant uplift on what he's currently earning at Chelsea. And the figure I've been told, which in pounds sterling is £125,000 a week, would shatter West Ham's current wage structure. It would make Zuma, Zuma by far and away their best paid player. And that could pr cause problems in the dressing room. Now he is a Champions League winner, a France international, and he is the key target for West Ham manager David Moyes to strengthen that defence. But I think some more negotiations are going to have to take place before that deal gets done. It's certainly not there yet. If it does get done, then it will open the door for Chelsea, in their mind, to hopefully close out a deal for Jules Koundé, the Sevilla and another France international defender. It would be a really exciting acquisition, but they're not there just yet. West Ham looking to spend some money, but they don't have a huge amount. So if they get Zuma, it'd be seen as a coup, but I don't think there will be loads more business at the London Stadium. And Moyes, of course, has to encounter European football this season. So it's going to be a really tough balancing act, domestic and European competition on a relatively thin squad with a definitely thin budget. David, one of the, the main talking points this transfer window has been Harry Kane and, and his future. And if he was to leave Spurs, are there any specific players forwards that, that Spurs have in mind that are playing in the Premier League at the moment? Danny, this is the question we're all asking now. Are Manchester City going to come in for one last push to get Harry Kane? I've been quite clear on NBC that I don't think that's going to happen. If I was a betting man, I would say that he's going to be staying at Spurs now. It's getting too late and the sort of money that Daniel Levy would want it's just not where Manchester City are at at the moment. 
and Tottenham would also, as you say, need to replace him. What I think is more likely is that Tottenham are going to bring in re reinforcements regardless. Now, they're in talks. It's at a relatively early, early stage, as my understanding, contrary to reports, to bring in Papa Sarr, the young uh, Senegalese midfielder from Metz. But most notably today here in the UK, they are interested in signing Adama Traore from West Ham. We know all about his speed. 25-year-old, Spain international. Uh, they played against each other, of course, yesterday, and he shone. He really tore Tottenham apart in patches. Now, I've been speaking to people at both clubs and around this deal or potential deal today, and we uh, Wolves are going to put up strong resistance. Tottenham would like him, but that's driven by their manager, Nuno Espirito Santo, not by their transfer gurus, Fabio Paratici or Steve Hitchin, nor Daniel Levy. It's a Nuno pursuit because he worked with him, of course, at Wolves. Tottenham would like to take him on loan with an option to buy. Wolves will never countenance that. They would maybe consider a loan with an obligation to buy, which means that they will get their money at some point. But Wolves will want huge money, more than Liverpool play, paid for Diogo Jota, because he's become such a key man under the new manager at Wolves this season. We've seen that in just two games, that Bruno Lage really relies on Adama Traore. The big factor here, though, is his contract. It only has two years to go. It's been on the table since November. It's not been signed. I think Wolves may offer him a new and improved contract, a better offer than they've already put in front of him. Let's see if he signs that. But Tottenham's interest is concrete, and clearly they are trying to reinforce their squad, whether or not Harry Kane is to depart. David, thanks so much, mate. I uh, hope that wasn't too painful for you. That's <laughs> three asking the questions. But thanks, mate. Top man, and we'll see you next time. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.